Hi, I'm Jonah, and this is a Learn to Play tutorial for Blowing in the Wind, a classic folk song by Bob Dylan that a lot of us know. And that's really helpful because when you're trying to translate music from a written music from the page into a, into a melody on an instrument like the flute, it's really helpful if you can hear that melody in your head as you're doing that. Now, if you don't know the melody, you can go on to YouTube and just uh, do a quick search for Blowing in the Wind and you can get an idea of what the melody sounds like. Now, I think of this as being a be upper beginning level song and mostly because it has some cross fingerings in it. The rhythms are pretty straightforward and most of the fingering is pretty straightforward except in a few places where there's some cross fingering. So if you haven't played with cross fingering that much, it'd be, this is a great song for learning some of that dexterity and you can add some of that into your everyday playing as well to create some more diversity. Now I'm going to be playing this on a bass flute, a condor bass D, and I think that this song goes really well with the bass flutes or mid-tone flutes. The higher tone flutes, you know, experiment with it. For me, it, it doesn't really fit those because I know the song and it's kind of a melancholy song. So that those lower mid-tone flutes or those bass tones really go or work well with the song. Now I'm going to play the song through once and then I'll do a little introduction of how to use these tutorials and then we'll go right into the tutorial itself. Now the easiest way that I find to learn songs is to work through them phrase by phrase. Now phrases are like sentences. You put a bunch of sentences together to build a story. In the same way, you put a bunch of phrases together to build a song. Essentially, each time you pause to take a breath, you've completed a phrase. And because in the music we've added these breath marks, you can easily see that the phrases begin and end at each of these breath marks. I've also noted the number of the phrases using these numbers with lines through them. Phrase one, two, and so on. As I walk through each phrase, I'll note anything that's unusual or particularly challenging in that phrase. And then I'll show you how to play it. And I'll play it at a really slow tempo. And at that point, I suggest pausing the video and working on that phrase until you have the fingerings and the rhythm pretty well down at that slow tempo. And then move on to the next phrase. Once you move through the whole song, I suggest going back to the beginning of the song and working through each phrase again. And each time you do that, your hands will memorize the fingerings a little bit more and you'll memorize the rhythms a little bit more and the song will get easier to play and you can start bringing it up to tempo. This is a note that some of you may not have played before, and when you come to this note in the song, have some patience with yourself. It might take a little time to learn the transition from the note before it to this note and then to the note after it. I'll also be talking more about this note and the transitions as we walk through each phrase. This is the sheet music for Blowing in the Wind, and I think of this song as being an upper beginning to lower intermediate level song, mostly just because there is a cross fingering. There's a note that's outside of the pentatonic scale, the, that normal scale that we all learn when we're first learning the native flute. But as far as the rhythms go, it's a pretty straightforward song in that respect. And so if you haven't learned 
some of these cross fingerings, if you haven't played around with cross fingerings before, this will be a good song for moving into that. Now the sheet music itself is a little more complex to read than some more just straightforward sheet music. And that's because of these repeats and like these areas where they're bracketed in here. And it's written this way in order to make the sheet music more concise. And the way this works is that these are repeat areas that are repeated. And we know that because of this symbol here. And so the way this works is you play through this beginning portion and then you move into this first ending where it's number one here and you play through the bracketed area to the repeat symbol and then you go back to the beginning of the song, you play through and when you get to here, the second time around, you go to the second ending, which is here, you play through that till you hit this repeat symbol Then you go back to the beginning and then you play through there and then you play through this again, this bracketed area that's number three here, which is the same as the number one. And then when you get to the repeat symbol again, you go back to the beginning and then you move through there and then you get and then you finish it by going and ending through the, re the ending number four, this ending here, which takes us to the end of the song. And again, the sheet music is written this way in order to make it more concise so that it takes less pages to write out the whole song. Now, this is phrase one, but it's, if you see here, I have it as phrase one, three, five, and seven, and that's because of those repeat symbols. So this actually is phrase one, three, five, and seven. You're going to play that, this, we're going to play this phrase four times throughout this sheet music. So in this phrase, it's a pretty straightforward rhythm. The only thing that I would say is, uh, is a little challenging in it is this spot here where it's this eighth note tied to this quarter note. And that means that it gets one and a half beats. And so the easiest way that I find to learn rhythms like this is to count the measures out, uh, out loud. And what a measure is, is, is it's the way the music's broken up between these lines. And so if I count out the first two measures, this measure and this measure, it would sound like this. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, four. Or da 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 da. So you can hear how this note here is held for one and a half beats. And this is where it's really helpful if you know the song because you can hear, you can sing the song in your head as you're playing it, so you can know what the rhythm is supposed to sound like. How many times must I... So you can kind of hear how that rhythm happens and you can see it on the page at the same time. This is phrase two, going from this breath mark to this breath mark. And the most challenging part of this phrase is the cross fingering, going from this note to this note to this note. And this is kind of what makes it an upper beginning to lower intermediate level song, is if you haven't uh, played with opening one hole while closing another at the same time. So here's a simplified version of this particular pattern of notes here. And if you're having trouble getting your, the dexterity of moving your fingers through these notes, I would suggest pausing the video here and just first work on actually just physically teaching your fingers how to do it. And then once your fingers are getting the dexterity of it pretty smoothly, then start adding it into the song and moving through it at a slow tempo. And as you move along and you're learning it more and more, your fingers will start moving through that cross fingering quicker and you can bring the song up to tempo.
Now the third phrase begins at the end of the first ending, which is right here. So we played through the beginning once, we played through this first ending, and then at the end of this first ending, we hit this note here, and immediately after we see the repeat symbol, so we go back to the beginning of the song. And from there, it's exactly the same as the first phrase, so it has all the same qualities to it. Again, the most challenging part, I think, is this uh, dotted half note, or this eighth note that's tied to this quarter note that's held for one and a half beats. So now we're at the fourth phrase, and the fourth phrase starts here after this breath mark, but then we've already moved through this section. This is the first ending, and so we're going to go down to the next, en the next ending, which is ending number two, and so then we're going to play through here. So the most challenging part of this phrase is, again, this cross fingering. So here's a schematic of the cross fingerings for that section. And again, the same thing, work on the dexterity of the cross fingering first. And as your fingers start moving through that cross fingering easily, add it into the song and then start bringing it up to tempo. So at the end of that last phrase, phrase four, we see here the repeat symbol, which means we go back to the beginning of the song for phrase five. And we've played through this phrase a number of times already, and so you're likely getting used to playing this phrase and memorizing how it goes. Phrase six is exactly the same as phrase two because it starts here at the end of phrase five on this note. And then for this ending, we go here where it says three because we're on the third ending and we play through to the breath mark. So again, here's a diagram of this cross fingering. So work through this cross fingering again to pick up the dexterity of it. And hopefully this phrase is coming more easily to you the second time around here. Phrase seven starts here at the end of this third ending here and then we hit the repeat mark so we go back to the beginning of the song one more time and then we play through this as phrase seven. So here we are at phrase eight, which begins here. And then after this note, we move on to the fourth ending. So we're on the fourth ending now. So we jump all the way to the bottom of the page here where it shows this number four. And because this bracket just ends here, we know that we're gonna keep on going for a while. And in this case, to the end of the song. But for this phrase, we're gonna work through this phrase to this breath mark here. 
And in this phrase, again, we have this cross fingering, which is the same pattern as we saw in some of the other phrases. And so here's a diagram of that cross fingering. And again, work through that until your fingers get that dexterity. The rhythm is pretty straightforward. And so when it, once you get the dexterity of this cross fingering, I think you'll be able to move through this phrase relatively smoothly. For phrase nine, I combine the two sheet pages of sheet music because phrase nine begins on page one and then continues on to page two. So this top line is page one and the second line here is page two. So it starts here at the end of phrase eight and then we move into the rest of the phrase. Now, the challenging part of this phrase is the cross fingering here. And here's a diagram of that cross fingering to help you out. Look it over and work on that dexterity of that and then move it into the song like you did before. And the other part on this phrase is that we also have the same rhythm here where we have this eighth note here followed by this eighth note tied to this quarter note which again gets one and a half beats. So we have that one and a half beat rhythm again. And what it sounds like here, if I count it out, starting in this measure here and then moving through this measure is one, two, three, four, one, and two, three, four. Da, 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 da. And again, if you know the song, it'll help out because you'll be able to hear what it's supposed to sound like in your head as you sing the song. And you can translate that into the rhythm that you see on the page and that you're hearing on your flute. The answer, my friends, is blowing in the wind. You can see why I became a flute player and not a singer, so excuse my lack of singing ability, but it kind of gives you the idea of what it's like to sing it in your head as you're playing the song. And here we are at the last phrase of the song, phrase 10. And it's a very similar phrase to phrase 9. The rhythm is really similar. And we have, again, we have this, the eighth note to the one and a half beats, this eighth note tied to this quarter note, which gives us one and a half beats. So that rhythm has come up a number of times in the song. So hopefully you're able to catch that smoothly at this point. And it also has the same cross fingering pattern that we saw in the uh, in phrase nine as well.